Next on BYUFM, the Cougars are taking over New Orleans. Will Jamal Williams be big time in the Big Easy? Quarterback Keaton Slovis gives us his three biggest surprises since arriving on campus. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, March 16th, perhaps the greatest sports day of the year as March Madness officially begins the first round. Get your brackets filled out. I'm Jerem Jordan. He is Dave McCann. You have 15 minutes to finish your bracket if you haven't filled it out. It's an amazing time. It's almost like eating too much pizza, where you just, there's so much that you just keep eating it, and you're not even hungry, and you keep eating it again. That explains why tonight at 9 o'clock we'll be still watching games. It's going to be you awesome. just consume. Four games at a time. I have a buddy who took work off tomorrow. I said, I'll join you in the afternoon. And he's got the one TV. I said, you know what? I'm going to bring three TVs over so that we can watch all four <laughs> at the same time. Nice. It's going to be awesome. When your own team isn't in the big dance, it is such a big deal. It just feels like you're, you're missing out on so much. Yeah. Uh, perhaps next year, BYU can get back there. You think next year? That'd be nice. That would be uh, nice. It's probably a two-year build, but let's go. <laughs> we, have a, we have a March Maddening show today full of good stuff. Reuniting with Gonzaga, is that a good idea? We're going to think about that and pitch some ideas. Could they be in the Big 12? Keaton Slovis is quarterback at BYU. We caught up with him yesterday, asked him for his three biggest surprises that, that he's noticed since coming on campus. And Nani Falatea is going to join us as BYU gets ready for Rice tomorrow night in the WNIT. Let's start with the headlines. BYU spring football practice continues. Receiver Chase Roberts is excited about the offense. I'm excited about Keaton Slovis. You know, he's a great player and a great leader, and he can, he can sling the ball. So um, we're starting to get, to get that connection going uh, with all the receivers. There's some guys out, but I know that as spring ball starts to wrap up, we'll, we'll start rolling, and then off season, come fall camp, uh, we'll be ready to go. I think we're all excited about Keaton Slovis, and we're excited to hear from Keaton, his conversation with Dave later in the program. Those two got together for a spectacular touchdown pass and catch yesterday. BYU's all-time leading rusher, Jamal Williams, signed a three-year deal with the Saints for yeah. $12 million. Eight million of that is guaranteed. The move reunites Jamal with Taysom Hill. Together, they combine for 6,716 yards rushing and 111 total touchdowns at BYU. Does that make New Orleans BYU South? Uh, it does now. Uh, and those are video game numbers that you just said. That's <laughs> awesome. Baseball begins West Coast Conference play with the three-game series at LMU tonight at 9 Eastern on the BYU Radio, radio, uh, BYU radio app. Of course, coming off that tremendous win on Tuesday against Utah. That was a big one. The rain washed out last night's BYU-Utah softball game. Cougars are in St. George today to take on Utah Tech. They'll be home Saturday for a doubleheader against Utah State. Uh, Utah State. It's actually going to be Idaho State. Sorry, it's actually going to be their home opener after all this time. After all the dust settles. I don't believe there's any rain in the forecast for Saturday. Let's hope not. Uh, women's tennis falls 4-3 to Fresno State. The Cougars play Harvard in San Luis Obispo, the only place that I've ever surfed in my life in California. No kidding. Yeah. Eric Mika and the G League Ignite fall to Sioux Falls Sky Force 120 to 116. 14 points, eight boards, three assists for the former BYU big man. Defense optional in that game. <laughs> All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. those highlights all day. If we just played those highlights the whole show, I don't think any of us would mind. Uh, What's Trending is presented by Tim Daly Ford, part of the Utah. Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Huge day uh, for Cougars in the NFL news. Massive uh, day, of course. But what was the biggest Cougars in the NFL news, Dave? Aaron Rodgers saying he wants to play for the Jets, and certainly Zach Wilson there affected. And uh, Jamal Williams joining Taysom in New Orleans. What was bigger? We were at practice yesterday when we got the text that Jamal was signing with the Saints, and we're just like, what? The combination of Jamal and Taysom, two of Cougar Nation's all-time favorites, uh, in a league where they'll play Tyler Algier two times a year in that division, uh, it just felt right, and no one thought that Jamal was going to go to the Saints. But Alvin Kamara's got legal problems. It could keep him out for a long time this season, and, uh, and there's an opportunity, not only for Jamal to get in, but for Jamal to get in a lot. Had 1,000 yards, 17 touchdowns last year. The Saints could use that. Yep. And Taysom now gets to do the RPO with Jamal, which we saw so many times here in Provo. I think it's huge. 
Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, Saints signed Derek Carr, certainly as a starting quarterback, so Taysom uh, could still be used in that way. But the idea that those two team up again in any way is awesome because in 2013 we saw one of the greatest uh, rushing seasons BYU's ever had. It is the most yards BYU's rushed for in a season at that point. And uh, BYU had 2,000-yard rushers in a season. That's the only time the Cougars have ever had that. Taysom actually had more than Jamal. Uh, there was a point where had Taysom continued healthy and run the way he run, uh, was running, he would have been the all-time leading rusher. Instead, it is yeah. one Jamal Williams, uh, which is an incredible feat. The personality of Jamal will be fun in New Orleans as well. Um, he makes that team uh, better. Um, certainly, Alvin Kamara is a tremendous player, and if he's not there, Jamal has some big shoes to fill. But, uh, yeah, uh, I think that is a bigger impact because, or bigger news because Jamal Williams is going to play. Now, in the case of Zach Wilson, uh, he will certainly be behind Aaron Rodgers, of course. But, um, you know, Zach Wilson um, has an opportunity now to learn from someone, clearly be the backup, not have that pressure, and maybe, um, you know, the Jets uh, give him a chance down the road post-Aaron. I tend to think that Zach won't have a chance with the Jets anymore at all. That that will come as a backup on another team in the future. Yeah. But the opportunity for him to take a step back, to be ready should there be an injury or an issue. Uh, there won't be an issue with Aaron Rodgers' production, you wouldn't think, but just where he probably won't be needed. That he can get the time to develop that he didn't get as the second overall pick. The, the awesome part about it being the second pick is the signing bonus and the contract. You're the man. You're expected to do a lot. You get an opportunity. Perhaps he was rushed into it too quickly, didn't perform well enough, the OC didn't give him a chance, whatever excuse you want to make for it. Now he has a chance to really settle in. Big fan of Aaron Rodgers, we know yeah. that. He'd said that on the show as much. In fact, he's, he said on the show, he doesn't really have any swag, though. just has the old <laughs> school chin strap. He can say that to Aaron himself now. But, you know, yeah. He can develop a relationship there, similar to kind of what Taysom Hill did with Drew Brees, where it's, okay, I can learn from you, and now I can get better. We'd certainly like to see Zach in the NFL, performing, performing well. That's not going to happen for a couple of years now, and perhaps, I think, probably on a different team. If he can, if he can take this moment and take a breath and, uh, and maybe a little humility in there and just go, okay. I haven't talked to Zach, but I've talked to his friends. His friends have said Zach was hoping for Aaron Rodgers to come to New York. So, Which tells us so a lot. So there's that atmosphere, atmosphere there. But if he can just soak it in, yeah. get in and play, and, and you know, Aaron gets hurt here and there, and so there's opportunities. Uh, the white is already gone, so there's no yep, like buddy ahead out. of Zach. Um, and, then, and then wait. I mean, Garoppolo waited behind Tom Brady forever, never got his chance with the Patriots, but a team grabbed him and paid him a fortune. And then another team's grabbed him and paid him another fortune. There are opportunities still there, even if you're not a starting quarterback right now in the NFL. And, and, and we still don't know if Zach is an NFL quarterback. We think he is uh, because of what he did here. And we have all those reasons as to why he didn't succeed in New York. Um, and he had some bad throws and some bad decisions and all that stuff. But man, here comes Aaron Rodgers for a reboot and they didn't cut his pay. So Zach gets a reboot without a reduction in pay. I would think that he would be the happiest backup quarterback right now in the NFL. And he'll, he'll get a chance to learn from one of the best uh, quarterbacks ever. Certainly one of the top five, maybe top three, which, which would be awesome. And Nathaniel I, Hackett makes a difference too, by the way. Right. New offensive coordinator. Michael Four was a first-time OC. Now you got a guy who was the OC at, with the Packers for a time with Aaron. So that's a storyline here. Can that influence uh, Zach in a way where he will be more prepared? Oh, and they brought in Lazard. They're going to get in some other guys. Funny how they're just getting guys now because they got Aaron Rodgers. Yep. And then... Then when Aaron goes out, Zach gets to come in and throw those same guys, which will be better than what he's had the last couple of years. They get their running back back healthy. And, yep, and a lot of Vegas thinks the Jets will be a contender with Aaron Rodgers. I, I think so, too. I, I think they were a quarterback away last year. Um, you know, Zach struggled. They, In spite of Zach uh, and his struggles, they were 6-3 and three at one point mm -hmm. and really mailed it in down the stretch to come up short. But Jets are must-watch TV now. Um, and certainly they have to figure out that combination, that package of of uh, picks and trade to get him officially because it's like he's not going to the Jets right now officially. He, it, it still has to happen, but yeah. I, I'm excited for Zach because he certainly needs, uh, he needs a minute 
right now to figure some stuff out. So uh, the swing back on Jamal, I, I texted uh, David Nixon, who's Taysom Hill's brother-in-law. I said, hey, what's Taysom think of this? He hadn't talked to him yet. But Nixon had been around the team, the Saints, and, and his comment back was, Jamal's going to be just what that locker room can use. Mm. You know, breath of fresh air, uh, energy, entertainment. I think he might dance all the way down Bourbon Street. I, I think you the know, fit is going to be New Orleans really fun. and Jamal might be just perfect. Yeah, New Orleans is a very, f <laughs> obviously, fun city and, and fun vibe um, and unique. And, like, Jamal's a unique guy. Like, he loves his anime and he loves, uh, you know, playing catch with the kids. He's great. And those two personalities there on the screen couldn't be any more different. Yes, very different personalities. <laughs> Both want to get the job done in a different way, right? Um, so it's going to be fun to see these guys together. And... I mean, when you talk uh, all-time QB running back tandem at BYU, I, I think that's the best one BYU's ever produced. I, I think um, it's hard to beat that because BYU's had some really good running backs over the years, but they weren't paired with a top-10 right. QB always. Right. Um, you could argue Robbie and Lockie were, were up there, and Max and Harvey uh, were tremendous, right? And you could argue Zach and Tyler uh, yeah. in 2020. Doman and Staley had it going. Amazing, right? Um, Jamal and Taysom are certainly in that convo of – Best ever QB running back tandem. So envision this. The Saints get down there to the three-yard line. Taysom's in and Jamal's in. They break the huddle. This is Taysom's a at quarterback. Dream. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal's to his right as a defense. Now you're dealing with a guy who scored more touchdowns than anybody at running back last year in Jamal. And Taysom, whose uh, history speaks for itself. And now Taysom gets the ball. He gets to decide, am I going to run it or is Jamal going to run it? And the defense has to get ready for both. That's going to be must-see TV for BYU fans. And what kind of a nightmare for a defensive line? It's going to be awesome. Uh, the, you know, Saints appropriately named for uh, these, these two guys. So it's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. And, and, they're, and they're both getting paid. We like to see them <laughs> yeah, be successful. We like the 8 mil guarantee. Paid. Lunch is on Jamal. <laughs> the athletic Stuart Mandel was with us yesterday. And he said a lot of things about expansion and all that stuff. But then he dropped a couple of lines in there about when asked about Gonzaga in the Big 12. And uh, he goes, wow, it's going to be matter of weeks for this to happen as opposed to is it going to happen here's what he said it's inevitable um for a couple reasons you know one it's obviously a very attractive basketball conference two gonzaga is only going to leave the wcc if the conference they're going to is willing to take all their sports and not just men's and women's basketball and the big 12 from what we have been told has given them that assurance. I don't know that the Pac-12, I mean, the Pac-12 is just not far enough along to be able to, to make any sort of assurances to Gonzaga. So we think Brett Yormark is obviously priority number one is those Pac-12 schools. You know, right. waiting to see what happens there. But I don't, whatever happens there, I still think they want Gonzaga. Stuart Mandel yesterday on BYU Sports Nation. Is Gonzaga to the Big 12 good for BYU? Sure. Uh, it's I, I, previously I've said, listen, uh, I'm, I'm cool not playing them again. Uh, but if they're in the league, great. Now you have a Western partner. If there's no one else added, I would imagine they would seek to add more. Obviously, we're open for business, as we've talked about. You know what? It's going to be tough no matter what in that league. Um, how much tougher can it get if you add Gonzaga in Arizona? Like, it, it's going to be tough to to make the NCAA tournament. Period. Right. Um, but if you added Gonzaga and even in Arizona, or whatever. Yeah, uh, but hope, yes, hope now you're the best league by far. You're the best league by far now. Now no one's touching you no. ever. Um, you could break away and have your own tournament. You and really, claim a national you champion. really could. You <laughs> really could. Yeah, I, I, I almost say why not at this point. Um, obviously, uh, bringing Gonzaga in, you're, there's a familiarity there with BYU and all the other sports that BYU competes with Gonzaga in. Obviously, men's basketball leads there. But I wonder what the difference is between inviting Gonzaga and, say, Colorado based on the coach. Now, hear me out. If you invite Colorado to the Big 12 thinking, hey, we want Dion, Dion's going to be gone in a couple years. He if might it, be gone in a year. Yeah, if it if works. If it works. And if it doesn't work, he'd be, be gone, gone too. Anyway. Mark, how many years does Mark Few have left to Gonzaga if they don't go to the Big 12? I would think it'd be fewer than more. If, be, if Gonzaga goes to the Big 12, I would think that extends that for him. It's a new thing. You've You've... Uh, brought Gonzaga into the Big 12. It's the most amazing thing ever for the commish, as we jokingly like to call him here. I, I, and then when he's done, what is Gonzaga? Can they maintain a similar level of top 25-ness? Right now, it's not top 25. It's top 15. Yeah. And prior to this year, the last, like, eight, it's been, like, top five. So I, I just wonder, um, 
if this is a mark a, a, a mark few move uh, as and when opposed he's to a Gonzaga move. as opposed to a Gonzaga move. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm Gonzaga, I go to Mark Few and I go, okay, we're going to do this. I want a 10-year commitment that you're going to be with us for 10 years, and then that gives us five years to figure out who's going to come next. But if you get tired, and Dave Rose the other day was saying, hey, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I don't want any part of this NIL business. The way recruiting's done, I am so glad I'm out. Uh, all it takes is a is a health scare or um, a spouse that says, "Hey, let's get out of this," with or 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 just getting tired to where you're out and glad to be out, but your program's now in uh, where it's got to fight to stay relevant because they don't want to go in there and take last or the middle. Gonzaga will think they're going in there to compete right at the to top. To win it, yeah. And, and, and why wouldn't they? Um, but, they but I would need a guarantee that Few's going to go, oh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be here for a long time. I like it because of the familiarity it gives BYU. There's comfort in familiarity. That doesn't mean BYU's going to beat Gonzaga, but BYU knows what it takes to compete with Gonzaga. They don't know what it's going to take to beat Kansas State, Kansas, West Virginia. Have we Baylor. ever played West Virginia? Baylor's going to – you just go yeah. on down the line. Texas in basketball, uh, it seems like that will be tough. Of course it will, but there's no history. Gonzaga BYU has a history. They actually know how BYU to beat them. Win. They yeah. know how to beat them. This last year they could have beat them twice. They didn't, um, but they were right there. And so I think uh, when you're talking about, hey, what, what games does BYU feel the best about playing in the Big 12? Why wouldn't Gonzaga be one of them? Just because, well, we've played them tough for the last 12 years. Um, give us something we know, and we're comfortable with that. That doesn't mean we're going to beat them, but at least we know how to beat them. Yep. Everything else is going to be learn on the job, I think. Yes, there, there's a familiarity there um, that, that is a little is comfortable. It's like, oh, we, hey, listen, they're a better program, certainly, than BYU. They're a better program than almost everybody. Right. Um, but, yeah, hey, I, I used to be kind of anti this. Fine, whatever, great, just... Load them up. Let's go. More Four corners. More. Yeah, more is more. Yes, it is. <laughs> Our question of the day is this. Jamal Williams joining Taysom Hill in the Big Easy. Aaron Rodgers joining Zach Wilson in the Big Apple. What's the bigger cougar in the NFL news from yesterday? At uh, Orms by Daniel on Instagram. To me, Jamal and Taysom is the bigger news since we'll likely see both of them playing regular minutes. Rodgers with Zach is good in that it'll provide Zach the needed mentor, which should eventually take his game to the next level. But it also relegates him to a backup so he won't play regular the uh, next season, barring injuries. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's the Jamal. Long term, it is. might be Zach. Yeah. Short term for us viewers uh, and our fantasy football drafts and all that yep. stuff. It's like, no, I'll take those two. We're all watching Saints games, just like we were watching Jets games suddenly last oh, yeah. year, right? Just like half of Utah still thinks Steve Young's going to play for the 49ers this week. <laughs> Because they're going to tune in and go, why am I a 49er fan? Because Steve Young played for the 49ers. Half of Utah is still, yes, uh, <laughs> Niners fans. Continue to weigh in on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Plan to be with us coming up March 24th. That's a week from tomorrow for BYU Pro Day. Jaron Hall, Puka Nakua, Blake Freeland, another Cougar is going to work out for NFL scouts. We've got a two-hour BYU Sports Nation special. Our coverage starts at noon Eastern. That's March 24th on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Coming up after the break, Dave talked with Keaton Slovis yesterday at practice. His three surprises from spring ball so far. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. rock your retirement on the court, on the snow, on the waves, or in the gym. At Mountain America, we're here to help you get things rolling. Learn more at macu.com slash retirement. Mountain America, guiding you forward. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. 
this mid-size truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. This competition is going to be something else. You have to be able to break through those hard moments when it hurts the most. Whatever you think you're capable of is true. You're a fighter. Hold your head up. You know what you're capable of. We're all proud of you. That's what makes a champion. Let's go! Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day Cougar Sports play-by-play. -play. Jim Jordan alongside Dave McCann. Uh, we were at practice yesterday, and offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick told the media he's impressed with what he's seeing early from new quarterback transfer Keaton Slovis. Keaton's playing really well. He, he and We're only five practices into it, so there's a, still a lot of room for growth, but um, he, he's a veteran player, and he, he shows it out here every day. There, each, each day there are a few things that happen for the first time in our offense that are like new to him just with our system. So there's some growth there each day, but just as far as like his ability to run the team and make the plays that you need to, to make uh, at this level, he, sh he shows us every day. He's a good, good quarterback. That's a happy coordinator right there. You can just see it. In you, his can, eyes. you can tell yeah. when Aaron's when Aaron's bugged. Aaron's bugged, right? But he's very happy. He is happy yeah. that he got this guy in the yep. portal. I caught up with Keaton after the workout and asked him, among many things, his three biggest surprises since showing up here on campus. Here's our interview. Keaton, what did you do today that you're happy with? Uh, just thought we ran the offense really well. I thought all, all the quarterbacks, uh, we got in the red zone, we scored. That's kind of your job as an offense. You want to be a good team, you have to score in the red zone. So I thought um, as an offense, we did a great job of that. Seemed like a spirited exchange with the defense. Is it starting to get intense? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, what, day five, six now. And I think the both sides are, you know, play against each other a lot. And, you know, you want to win the drill. And everyone wants to win the drill. So, uh, you know, I think they won in the first one. And we kind of took a lot of pride in winning the second drill for sure. What have you learned about this team in two weeks? Um, we have a lot of fun, and uh, guys are coached really well, I think. Um, and even when, when you don't really execute the play as, as much as you like, I think guys are fired up to, to do it themselves. It's not like they need a whole lot of motivation. I think guys are, are really fired up intrinsically, which is uh, everything you want as a teammate. In this offense, what do you find the most challenging? Um, just be more and more familiar with the plays I haven't ran before. But um, again, I think Coach, Coach A-Rod and, and Matt make it really easy on the quarterback. We, we go over it a lot in meetings, and uh, I feel like out here I feel pretty comfortable. It wasn't but a couple of months ago that John Beck suggested you think about BYU, and, and here you are. And the other day you told me it felt like you'd been here forever. How come? <laughs> uh, it just does. Uh, it's hard to explain. I think just the, the way the team is, the culture, uh, the way the teammates act. Uh, I feel like I have a bunch of friends out here. So uh, when you have a certain amount of friends after three weeks, it feels like you know each other for a while. I guess it just feels like you know each other for more than <laughs> two weeks, and it turned out to be super nice. But, yeah, uh, you know, it's just a tribute to the, the coaches, the culture, and uh, the program Coach Klein has built. What are the three biggest surprises now that you're an expert at what BYU is? When you think about it, a couple of months ago when John said, hey, <laughs> think about BYU, and now what you know, what are the three biggest surprises? Uh, I think we have a lot of good players here. I kind of knew that, but you don't know until you get there. Uh, I think the players have impressed me. Uh, the culture, I've heard all about it. Everyone talks about the culture, and once you get in the building, again, that surprised me. And then, uh, shoot, probably the view. I've never seen these mountains with snow on it, so I was kind of shocked by uh, you know, all the ski resorts around and um, just the area. It's a great area, too. How much time do you spend thinking about your debut September 2nd against Sam Houston? Uh, that's a great question. I feel like I feel about, think about the whole season. Um, but, yeah, that, that day on the calendar is, is cer certainly circled with a, a big mark on it, yeah. Today it was announced that uh, the Big 12 and the NFL are partnering to do Pro Day next year, which will be your Pro Day, in Dallas on the NFL Network. It just seems like things are getting bigger and bigger for you. Yeah, I didn't know that until now. So, uh, yeah, it's great news. Uh, it's exciting to be a part of that conference and a lot of good players, a lot of good competition, and we're excited to be going competing in it. In our first interview, you talked about uh, your dad was impressed that, that BYU brought ice cream to the visiting fans when you were here in 2019. Have you broke the news to him that they don't bring ice cream to the parents of current team members? Yeah, he probably has to figure that one out the hard way, but uh, we'll get him. Well, he can't wear, like, an opposing shirt and switch it. He's got to just deal with it, maybe pay, you know, a few bucks for an ice cream now. <laughs>
He's going to be okay with that. Yeah, he'll he'll bite the bullet for that one. Looking at the next two weeks, what what do you want to get done here with this team where you feel like you got a handle on things? I think just iron out the little you know kinks and cooks and crannies that uh you know that you know each play you know there's little nuances and uh, kind of iron all that stuff out and get more and more comfortable with the plays that we haven't run a ton of or haven't had success with. But uh, I know we'll get to it eventually. Who gets after you the most, Kalani or Aaron Roderick, the offensive coordinator? Or Steve Clark? I saw him getting after a lot of guys. <laughs> I was about to say, uh, they're pretty cool and collected. Um, you know, it's kind of nice. that I feel like that's how I kind of carry myself. We talk about after. If I did this something wrong, they'll let me know. But it's not, um, again, I feel like there's a lot of trust in me. But also, um, you know, Coach Kalani came up to me the other day. He's like, man, just have fun today. And as a, from head coach, you know, you love hearing that because that's what it is. Football's a fun game. And uh, I feel like you play better when you're, you're having fun. You hit Chase Roberts on a corner route for a touchdown to beat uh, Hecker, the All-American transfer. Uh, that give you some satisfaction? Oh, yeah, it's great. I told Chase, one of many, uh, and he did a great job. And again, we're supposed to score when we get down here, and we did, and super happy about it. All right, thank you. Good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, thank you. On that touchdown pass, Jay Hill, defensive coordinator, said afterwards to us, you had the wrong call there. I felt bad. I put Hecker in the wrong spot. He goes, almost to say, that's not going to happen when we put our red zone defense in with his guys but but uh, you and I watched it yesterday there's some camaraderie mm -hmm. between both sides of the ball and there's some zip and it's spring and everyone's undefeated and all that stuff but there have been other springs when there hasn't been this this kind of a feeling and one thing I asked Keaton after we were finishing and, and just visiting for a little bit and his dad was there yesterday and he's figuring out the whole ice cream thing well, yeah he, he's he good that. but I asked Keaton I said look you've got 34 stars do you sense that the team recognizes that that experience and, and that the value of that moving into a Big 12. And he said he did. He said, um, you know, he goes, I've been in a lot of games. I've been in a lot of tough situations in a tough environment on the road and all these things. Including and he, Provo. Including Provo. And, uh, and he gets the sense that the guys are, it's almost like we're, we're going we're gonna to follow you. You've been there. We haven't. And uh, which is just how you'd want that. If you're Kalani, you're just exactly how you'd want. Been there, done that, ready to take BYU over there, and, and the guys are going, okay, we'll follow you. I think he's as good of a quarterback as BYU possibly could have hoped for out of the transfer portal. Yeah. I, I think it's tremendous. All the fact And the fact that he's played BYU, he's played in the West, he's played in two different uh, Power Five leagues um, in, in the Pac-12 and the ACC. This guy's ready, um, and he looks happy. Like, yeah. he looks like he's enjoying himself. And, uh, you know, so someone close to him said this, he said, this is the happiest I've ever been. And hopefully that's his life, too. Like, this is a fun, unique place where he mentioned, yeah, the culture's great. You don't, you hear about it, and then you get in here and you realize, oh, this really is fun. We care about each other. Um, I love that he said he's still getting familiar with the playbook. Um, lots of good players here. He said, you, you, you think and you hope, but you get in here and you go, oh, there are good players here. And, uh, of course, he loves the view. The best view will be throwing touchdowns against those mountains right. um, in Provo against the likes of Big 12 competition. But I, I'm so excited and still getting used to, frankly, it's like, wait, that's Keaton Slovis as a BYU quarterback? Like, that's great. It, it he, knows, he looks familiar. Like, that stretch wide on his helmet just looks yeah. normal and familiar, and it looks awesome. Man. And he said that, hey, there's, there isn't a quarterback competition here, so it's all business. This is the direction we're going, and, and this is the leadership, and yep. these are the plays. Clear objectives, and identified who's doing what. Clearly, he's the guy. Yeah. And BYU, the majority of BYU's success hinges on his ability to be good this year. Also, uh, Jay Hill, the new defense, like you said. It got a little chippy yesterday. So here's yeah. the deal. They have, they, they have uh, upper body pads only. They weren't wearing any leg pads. So the offense is just throwing themselves at the defense. And the defense one time kind of crumbled near the goal line and Jay Hill was uh, was uh, bugged because he's like stay up yeah the, That's the, this isn't hurt full tackling quite yet but you know when we will see full tackling is in two weeks and one day from today in the scrimmage on BYU TV yeah. I'm very excited we're gonna see these guys out for the first time uh, in the history actually showcase in a uh, scrimmage what they can do and obviously they don't want to give away a ton of stuff for future opponents but just to see uh, Eddie Heckard running around, and Keaton yeah. Slovison. Chase Roberts may be the alpha uh, among those receivers. Cody Epps and Keanu Hill, of course, there as well. Um, and then let's see who the backups are. We, we're going to get some depth answers as well uh, in that scrimmage, which will be fun. And then, listen, the roster as currently constituted is not what BYU will roll out in the fall because you've guys got, uh, like Max Tooley and Ben Bywater sitting out, you probably need another receiver or two 
Um, it, it, defensive line, you're still developing that yeah. way. J but John Nelson looks really good, adding to the group I mentioned yesterday. Keep your eye on the portal coming out of once once that football portal opens up. Yes. There's going to be yes. some action there. BYU needs a couple more dudes uh, mm -hmm. to, to get to the, you know, seven-plus range. I like what, what Keaton said when Kalani said, hey, just have some fun. Because he said you play better when you're having fun. That's true. As opposed to you play better when, when you hate Play stressed, hate your life. guys. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and Kalani, as, as we hear from former players, he's a fun coach to play for. Because he, he, he wants to have fun. Because he's smart enough to know that if, if Max Tooley's having a good time out there, it's because he is everywhere wreaking havoc. So let's get in the right mindset. Go out and have some fun. And by the way, in spring and these conditioning drills, we're teaching you that having fun also means you're in the right spot at the right time, ready to make a play, and then you go celebrate with your teammates. And, and that's part of the zip, I think, that's over there is, is that they're figuring this out. And it, it is exhilarating. I wish everyone could go in and watch practice for what we get to see because you're just watching you go, and September 2nd can't get here soon enough. And, and, then, and then everybody else. Then we go. Uh, the defense is excited about uh, the, the more aggressive attacking style right. as well. Right. Yeah, which, for which sure. Awesome. Basketball back at the Marriott Center tomorrow night. The Rice Owls are here. First round of the WNIT. Nani Fawatea, Lauren Gustin and company will try to take them down. Our live coverage starts at 9 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Austin Collie was coaching up the wideouts yesterday. Can BYU make that a more permanent conversation? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrum.com. dominate our playground place of business this is our promised land where we seek to find ourselves and we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should intermountain health care official medical provider for byu athletics Here's the thing about BYU Sports Nation. It's a banner that unites fans all over the world. BYU TV and BYU Radio are all about bringing your family events and games live. On air, online, and on the free apps. It's the next best thing to being there. Connecting your fandom with others across BYU Sports Nation. Download the apps and get exclusive access to analysis and interviews with players and coaches. BYU TV and BYU Radio. The place for all things Cougar sports. Tune in. Join in. BYU Sports Nation is back. We welcome you today to interact with the show. Get great content throughout the day. They have those social media platforms waiting for you. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Our question of the day is a pretty active one, so check it out. Yeah, and uh, the tournament's underway. Uh, Big 12 represent West Virginia up 13-4 to 4 on Maryland. So, uh, yeah, I, listen, uh, all Big 12 uh, in the first round. Let's go. They went 6-0 and last year. Hopefully they uh, go 7-0 and this year. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And, and go Zach Scales. You know what? I'm all in on everybody. Let's go. Uh, he is Dave. I am Jerem. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around is presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Cougar great Austin Colley was at practice yesterday. We saw him. He stayed after and spent some time with the wide receivers. Hopefully they listened to every word that he was saying. I saw them down there. I didn't realize that was Austin. There they are way down there. Yeah, way down. I didn't either. And then Austin put out a tweet. Not many pointers needed. Fessy Sataki has these boys dialed in as we ponder the question, hey, should Austin be around more often? Maybe even give him a spot. Well, you don't even necessarily have to be an official assistant coach or even an analyst. Um, 
John Beck's influence on the program is far reaching, despite oh, yeah. not being on the staff. So right. any involvement that Austin would have formally or informally, I certainly would welcome because to me, he's the greatest receiver in BYU. Chase Roberts has a lot of Austin Collie in him, how he runs routes and all that stuff. We talked about that last season. And then he went out and played like him, especially against Baylor. And he was down there listening as well. Yeah, that was Cody Epps down there uh, with Chase as well. So. Yeah, let's go, man. Okay, who will have the better rush game next season, BYU or BYU South, a.k.a. the New Orleans Saints? Well, BYU needs to have a better rush game <laughs> than the Saints because uh, they play fewer games. Uh, and, and Aiden Robbins and, and some of the new guys, along with Rapati and some of the older guys, have got to be able to move the ball on the ground so that Roderick can open up his whole playbook. Yes. Um, the Saints are going to be good just because they're all pros and this and that. And we'll see what David Carr is. He's terrible for the Raiders. Derek, Derek, Derek Carr. He's terrible for the Raiders. He gets a $60 million signing bonus for the Saints. So the Saints got what, big plans what a life. For, for that going on. I think uh, it's going to be exciting to watch both, but I think the football team in the first year of the Big 12 has to run the football. Yes. What do you think? Aiden Robbins, LJ Martin, Hinkley Rapati, Miles Davis, and company. Uh, Solche Maiava Peters, by the way, got a lot of run at running yeah. back yesterday. Look, uh, they use him in creative ways, which is really fun as a former quarterback. You talked to Aiden yesterday. He's, yeah. he's on the mend, ready to go. He's on the mend. Uh, he's out of a cast. Uh, I don't know if he had a cast, but he doesn't have anything on his wrist. Just, he said he's trying to get mobility on that uh, after surgery on the right wrist. So, um, yeah, he's super nice guy. He goes, hey, thanks for letting me meet your son. I brought Tate to Yeah, practice. that's awesome. And I go, uh, thank you. Uh, for So me. you're welcome. You were very nice. Uh, so, yeah, he's great. All right. Back to basketball. Jimmer was ranked 13th in a best men's college basketball players ranking since 2000 done by Complex Sports. Too high, too low, just right. I, I think it's uh, just right. I, I think that's fair for Jimmer. His uh, 28.9 and 2,000 plus points in uh, the career. And, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. His junior and especially senior years were unbelievable. His tournament, and every now and then CBS tweets out what he did at Gonzaga the year before BYU joined the WCC. The only shot Jimmer had at the Zags, he took them apart. I think, uh, I've said this before, but uh, Jimmer scared the crap out of Gonzaga to where they went from, oh, top 25 to top five team, where they were like, oh, BYU's come for us. Yeah. It's like, oh, we would love to win one championship. Uh, <laughs> You know, so I uh, I blame Jimmer in a fun way for Gonzaga's assist. So number 13, there's been 23 national players of the year over the course of time. And, and to put Jimmer at, at 13th best, that, that feels about right. That's pretty good. Yeah. He's number one in our head. In the last 36 hours, we've seen the presidents of Arizona State and Arizona, as well as Mark Carlin from Utah, of the Athletic Cricket, go on the record to talk about their optimism about the future of the Pac-12. Is it uh, more telling that these messages came out or that we haven't heard from Colorado? If it's a PR move from the Pac-12, they're like five months late, but better late than never if, if this is what's going to help them hold things together. Um, not sure what Colorado's doing. They're kind of a wild card. They, they have no loyalty to the Pac-12. Probably should have never gone there in the first place. If they stay, they stay. No one cares. If they leave and go back to the Big 12, it makes things a little interesting. i just like it to end. I just like, put your media deal, hold yourselves together if that's how you're going to do it, and let's move on to something else. But this rush of going out there is almost like how the president sends his people out uh, on damage control, uh, even if it has nothing to do with the actual reality of the moment. But you're going to see all the pundits out there going, the sky is not falling, the sky is not falling, the sky is not falling. While it's falling, we'll see. What Keep an eye on this. If the Pac-12 has a TV deal that earns more than the Big 12, 31.7, it may not matter because where are those games going to be seen? Because if you're not on ESPN and Fox, it's not as good for the exposure, even if the money's better. So while you may win in that regard, you don't win in the actual ability to view. Remember, BYU fans are still burnt over the mountain and right. the inability to see your games. If you're on Ion Television and Apple Plus, uh, it's not the same as ESPN and Fox, even if you make more money. So we'll see how that all shows. And what do these kids want today, these four and five star kids? They want bling and they want to be on TV because they all think they're going to the show. So if you can't put them on ESPN or Fox every week, someone will get there and go, hey, why would you want to go over there? You're when play over on here this channel. This? And that matters. Yes. That might, might matter more than any dollar amount a head coach gets or an athletic department raises uh, or, or, or any of what TV kicks in is, hey, we want to get this kid, but and BYU's dealt with it for 12 years. But we can't put him in the biggest bowls 
having been on national TV all year. Yes. You can get the biggest balls, but but you don't get seen during the year if you're on Amazon. In Independence, BYU chose to be in ESPN's conference, if you will. Yeah. Uh, we will be seen at a minimum, and to be seen is to be relevant if you're good. You can be rel you can be irrelevant and good if you're not on a ESPN Fox type channel. And so had BYU we'll not been on that, would they be in the Big 12 today? They might not. Right. They might not. We'll see. How much Kay. time, speaking of rogue television outlets, how much time are you going to spend today watching True TV? Uh, Tuesday was the day that, w that I remember that it existed. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, first four. Um, yeah, hand handful of time, couple, maybe an hour. So then maybe the whole TV thing isn't that big of a deal. <laughs> Put it on something obscure. Put it on True TV. We're all finding it today. Yeah. But at least it's not streamed. It is destination viewing, though, only for, you know, this weekend. Basically. I get the all future. Year. Future is streaming. We get that. Yeah. But what the viewer likes to do is be able to hop games. If it's there's got, five games on TV, I like to see all five of them. Got to be easily accessible. Yeah. You know? And we're still caught in the tradition of certain channels. Okay, coming up, BYU women's basketball taking on Rice tomorrow in the WNIT. Hey, first team conference, uh, all West Coast conference guard, Nani Falatea joins us in studio. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Do you ever feel small? Three, two, one, go! Have regrets? I guess we all have them. And trust, that's tough to earn or regain. You are the winner of Survival! Glad we're doing this. Game day, Eve. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Jerem Jordan alongside Dave McCann. Now joining us, the all-conference sophomore guard from BYU Women's Basketball, head of the WNIT with Rice tomorrow night, live right here on BYU TV at 9 Eastern. Nani Falate is in studio. What's up, Nani? How you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Uh, you're about to go to practice. You guys mm -hmm. always uh, practice early, so we yeah. appreciate you taking a sec. Yeah. You're like in uniform, ready to go. Yeah, I got awesome. it. Uh, we're also in a uniform, which just looks a little different. But right. uh, what was it like when you found out, hey, we're gonna we're gonna keep playing here in the 64 team WNIT? It was exciting, you know. Um, everybody wants to keep playing in March, so it's just we're lucky that we get to. I know the Gonzaga game and the way it ended down in Vegas was not how this team wanted the season to end, and so you do get that chance, kind of a fresh start, to come out and and play Rice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's gonna be really nice because you know you never want to end. A season like that on that note especially when we know that's not how you know we should play and we know we're a lot better than that and getting a home game is pretty cool um what's it going to be like to to continue that and hope to have a couple games here 
it'll be nice. You know, even like the last our last home game, you know, we don't want to go out on a, a loss like that here in Provo. So it'll be nice to be able to play in front of our fans, our family. As a sophomore, you've been asked to do a whole lot. Score, defend, run the team. <laughs> there have been highs, there's been lows. What have you learned the most about yourself over the course of this season? Um, I guess that I'm a little bit more resilient than I thought. You know, I think um, there's a lot of things that we as a team have dealt with that um, they're not really easy things to deal with. And um, definitely had the support of, like, you know, all my family, but my teammates and my coaches. So, you know, it's been a lot, but I'm grateful that we're still keep, keeping going. How was that transition for you from kind of role-playing freshman on the best regular season team BYU had ever had last year, one of the best teams overall, to, okay, I've, I've got to score a lot, and you became an all-conference guard first team? Um, you know, it, was, it wasn't too crazy just because, um, you know, like last year I didn't play too much, but I practiced against Paisley, and I practiced against Shea and Maria every single day. So it's not like I was going up against – like this year is not so much different than what I used to play against last year. Like I played against some of the best players in the nation every day. So. The scoring points have been a challenge for this team over the course of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, are there times where you look, you would look at Lauren and you say to each other, we both have to have really good games <laughs> yeah. to win this game, which puts a lot of pressure on the two of you, especially when one's having an off day. How do you deal with that? Um, me and her, we just have a really good relationship of trying to help each other out. Um, when one of us isn't really having the best day, it's, the other one always grabs them and is always like, hey, let's go. Like, we got this. It's me and you. We got this. So it's just me and her that we've built that connection of, like, we can help each other get back into things. What is something about Lauren we don't know? Because she's been such a stud this year, and uh, she could set the NCAA single season record in rebounds if she gets 32 in the course of this tournament. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's something we don't know about her? Um, probably that she's actually a really good shooter. Nobody would really think that because she doesn't shoot threes in the games very often. Um, but like we'd go through a drill at the end of the practice, it's called 100 threes, and we're all just shooting threes. And I'm always close to her in the drill, and she makes almost every shot she takes, but she just doesn't shoot in the game. So nobody would really guess that, but she actually has a really great shot. More threes from yeah. Lauren Gustin. More yeah. threes. Let's go. That's I know, I'm trying to pull it out of her. <laughs> <laughs> when, you know, you're not mic'd up when you play these games. So when you're out there talking to each other a few times this season, did you ever go, hey, Lauren, you're out rebounding their entire team. Nice job. Do you ever have those kind of exchanges out there? Um, often, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she does that quite, quite a few times, and um, it's just funny, like, in the middle of the game, I'll just look up and be like, wow, you're killing everybody. <laughs> like, good job. <laughs> <laughs> we, we watch rebounds like we haven't before. Um, right. mm -hmm. Maybe since Kyle Collinsworth getting triple doubles kind of deal. Um, big game with Rice tomorrow. Um, what, what's, they won this tournament, I believe, uh, a couple of years ago. Oh, really? What, what is uh, kind of the scout on them? What do they do well? Um, I know they're um, a pretty athletic team, and they got some key players. Uh, they're kind of inside heavy. Um, so that's going to be a lot on Lauren and Emma and Rose and Amanda. Um, but also as guards, we really need to focus on boxing out, just not get, letting them get any second chance points. So. Beyond tomorrow, you've got a huge recruiting class coming in. Mm -hmm. You're joining the Big 12, and your first-year head coach will be a second-year head <laughs> coach. Uh, how do you feel about the future? I'm excited. You know, it's going to be nice. Um, We'll have a new squad next year, of course, with all the new players. Um, but it'll be good. I'm, you know, I'm really happy with um, the team that we have right now. And that, we're, you know, this year was kind of like my freshman year all over again, trying to get used to things. Um, but it'll be nice to have, you know, kind of a year under our belt with all these same people, same, same staff, same players, you know, a few additions, of course. But um, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Talking to Nani Falatea, head of BYU and Rice tomorrow in the WNIT on BYU TV. You mentioned your family. Uh, I read you're the second oldest of eight. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you spoke Chinese growing up? Yes. <laughs> Very cool. How, how good's the Chinese at this point? It's not so good anymore. Was no. it elementary school? <laughs> yeah, elementary and middle yeah. school. And then I went to East High, and, yeah. which was kind of out of the immersion program. So I kind of lost it there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. And I just heard you, your brother's uh, in the MTC now going mm -hmm. on a mission? Yeah. Is he the first? Yeah, he's the mission? first. 
How's it, how's it going emotionally? That's you know, it's a little tough, yeah. honestly. Is it tough for sisters to drop off brothers? Yeah, I mean, I think it was tough for all of us. Like, I have three little brothers um, outside of the one that we just dropped off. So I think it was hard for them, too. You know, it's their big brother. It's their, you know, that's who they My sisters the celebrated when they dropped me off. <laughs> really? <laughs> they're like, get him out. Well, he's gone for two years. <laughs> What's his name? Where, where's he going? His name's Michael, and he's going to the Marshall Islands. Very cool. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. That's, a, right. that's a unique one. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you can get BYU TV there, which is fantastic. Yeah, yes, you can. Yeah. Brandon <laughs> Overender, a men's volleyball player a couple years ago, went to Oklahoma, but he spoke Marshallese. Because oh. there's a, he said they invited him to play volleyball one time. He dominated, then he was never invited never again, invited. which is crazy. <laughs> um, okay, so for this, this tournament and, and this uh, end of season situation, what are you guys hoping to accomplish to sort of springboard you into what Dave was talking about, which is a very exciting next season? Um, we want to win as much as we possibly can. You know, if we could go all the way, that's what we're going to do. And, you know, that's always the goal. We want to win. Can you give us one line in Chinese? Um, Ni hao, wo jiao feng yani. So hello, and then something else. Hello, my name is Lil. Lani Very, nice. Very nice. There we go. <laughs> when Jimmer went to uh, the <laughs> Shanghai Sharks, we looked up how to say, just pass me the dang ball. Oh, really? We thought, that's all. Bacio ge wo. I have no idea if that makes any sense or if it's any good. But that, but that's what Jimmer taught you? No, that's what we th felt like Jimmer needed oh, to learn. He needed to learn. Just pass me the ball. He doesn't need anything else, right? Um, with this group this year, it's such a fun group because you got like the Kiwi Wings, right, mm -hmm. with, with Kaylee and Ari. And uh, do you ever feel like you fit into the Kiwi mix there with them? You have to integrate <laughs> into New Zealand culture? I mean, Polynesian culture, yes. <laughs> so. and, and what's your background with Polynesian culture? I'm Samoan. You're Samoan. Yeah. Awesome. What, um, it's been fun with women's golf. We're seeing more um, Polynesian influence. Women's basketball, BYU, more Polynesian influence. What's it like as, as uh, we, we see from the Salt Lake area and surrounding areas, more Polynesian athletes uh, come to BYU and other places. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. I, I enjoy it, and it's always nice, you know, when a, like even like Alyssa Peely down at Utah. Mm -hmm. I know we don't like Utah, but <laughs> we gotta support She's other poly it. girls. Yeah, she, yeah, you know, it's it's just nice to see poly people succeeding. It's yeah. nice. All right, give us three keys to winning tomorrow against Rice. Three things that gotta happen. Mm, we have to box out, limit their offensive rebounds. Okay. Um, we have to get six kills, and um, that's just three stops in a row. And um, we all have to move well on offense, move off the ball. Okay. What do you average in kills per game? Um, I think five. Five. So if yeah. you get a little above that, yeah. you're good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, best of luck tomorrow. Thank uh, you. 9 Eastern on BYU TV. We appreciate the time. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Enjoy practice. Thank you. <laughs> It'll be a little harder than this. Yes. But enjoy it. Just yell, Bacio <laughs> Gewo, and no one will know what you're saying. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> hey, if you've missed any of our interviews or shows or games, you can find them on BYUSN.com. Download the BYU TV app. Get all the BYU sports content on demand. You can also get BYU and Rice live tomorrow night at 9 o'clock Eastern time from the Marriott Center. And coming up, March Madness begins in men's basketball uh, tonight. I guess it started Tuesday, Wednesday, but the brackets set it. Right. Who's in our Final Four, and why is it so Big 12 heavy? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history. There is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. I was a coach at BYU or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. We've got great energy as a team, but we have even better energy because of our fans, and it's absolutely magical. When you hear the crowd roar, that makes it more exciting, more of an adrenaline rush. 
the roar of the crowd. You can feel it on the floor. You can feel that energy. And it's unlike anywhere else in the country. BYU Sports, it's all about the fans. That thing is ours. Whoa! No one else could know about it until we figure out what it is. Agreed? Agreed. We're supposed to look out for each other. All this time, I've been searching for us. It chose you for, for a reason. We're in this together. You're the best friends I've ever had. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. That's a COVID touchdown right there. Remember that? With hardly anybody in the stands. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in the press box going, I'm one of like 250 people in the building here. This is super weird, yeah. BYU Sports Nation On Demand. Download the free BYU TV and radio apps or listen to the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, please. Our question of the day is this. Uh, Jamal Williams joins Taysom in the Big Easy. Aaron Rodgers joining Zach in the Big Apple. What's the bigger cougar in the NFL news from yesterday? Uh, at CL underscore living. Jay Swag Daddy has been a saint, sort of, for a long time, so it's been big... Uh, Big to have him team up again with Taysom. I'm trying to think if there's any other combination that you would like to see more than that one. Like Zach and Tyler Algier at some point would be fun to reunite. Or yeah. Zach with Brady Christensen as his left guard. Uh, you know, that, that's about as good as it gets. For Kyle Van Noy and Michael Davis were together last year for yep. the Chargers. Yep. But we're talking about offensive Not guys quite the get same, all the headlines. Right? Yeah. 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 Our Elite Voice of the Day is presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated. And it takes us back to the other trending topic about the Gonzaga Bulldogs potentially joining the Big 12. Yesterday, Stuart Mandel of The Athletic telling us, oh, it's inevitable, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Thanos, I guess, or something. And now they will be in in a couple weeks, he says. So we'll keep an eye on that. At uh, Pixo Inc., if Gonzaga goes to the Big 12, what basketball tournament will be better? Uh, the NCAA tournament or the Big 12 championship? I would think it's the Big 12. Yeah. It'd be like Thanos snapping his finger. Yeah. And only the Big 12 and, is around. Uh, yes. And then Iron Man, a.k.a. Kansas, comes in. <laughs> and it's like, uh, I am Iron Man. I win this tournament typically. Although, Texas beat Kansas by 20 this year to win the Big so 12 So much title. intrigue in the future with the additions of, of some of these schools, perhaps. It's going uh, to be wild. Okay. Today's Rise and Shoutouts presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. To our brackets that have yet to be broken, although there are two games being played as we speak, who's in your Final Four, Dave? I got Kansas, Kansas State, Houston, and Alabama with Kansas winning. Who do you got? Let's see. So you got a one, a three, a one, and a one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's I, not the most adventurous bracket, <laughs> but it's all about matchups and tournaments. Yeah, you go, you know sure. what? In this matchup, who's going to beat Kansas? Not them. Then you just all of a sudden they're your champion. Yep. Uh, defending champs. That'd be back to back. Uh, okay. Uh, I have Baylor as a three seed, Kansas State as a three seed, Texas as a two, and Gonzaga. I did all the homies. <laughs> the, old, the old homies and the new homies. It gives you so much to cheer for. I'm all in on the Big 12 with hoops. I just think it's going to be really uh, crazy. We're, we're about to see, because we've thought all along and we've shared the narrative that it's the best basketball conference in the country, bar none. Now in the tournament is when we get to see if that's true or not. Yep. We'll see if I get three or four <laughs> in the final four. Thanks to today's guest, Keaton Slovis, 90 Fallen. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. This and all our shows are on demand at BYUSN.com. For Dave, I'm Jim. Shout out to Mike Rose. Check out BYU Baseball at LMU tonight, 9 Eastern on the BYU Radio app. Go Cougs!